Welcome to labminutes.com and our lab video series on Cisco FTD 6.1. You can find a complete list of FTD videos on our website by clicking the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. This is the first video in our Firepower Threat Defense 6.1 video series. For those of you who have been following our previous ASA Firepower video series, welcome back. If you are new to Lab Minutes videos, we would like to welcome you guys as well. As you might notice, our video series is actually about Cisco Firepower Threat Defense and not ASA Firepower. And this is because this video series will be focusing on the FTD and not running Firepower as a software service on an ASA. With that said, the majority of our videos will be FTD specific, and there will probably going to be a couple of videos covering new features that are also applicable to the Firepower services or appliance. So if you are running either of those two platforms, you can ignore most of the videos at the beginning and go directly to the feature that you are interested in. Now for Firepower Threat Defense, or FTD in short, it's a Cisco platform for the next generation firewall. It basically combines the best of the features that are found on the ASA, which are the traditional layer 2 to 4 firewall, and the source fire firepower, which is the layer 7 firewall together into a single platform. So you might hear someone from time to time refer to this product as running a unified image. Since FTD is still a fairly new product and most of the Cisco ASA firewalls installed today are probably still running the ASA code, luckily, if you have an ASA 5500X, now except for the 5585X, you'll be able to convert them to FTD should you choose to do so. So in this first video, we are going to show you how to convert a typical ASA that is running ASA image to an FTD image. While this process should apply to most of the ASA platforms, it might be different from the FTD 4100 and 9300, which are the bigger boxes that can be found in data center, and in which case you might want to refer to Cisco documentation on the conversion process. If your firewall is already running FTD, you can just skip this video. And without further ado, let's dive into our lab. Here's what our lab is going to look like in this video. We've got our core switch, switch one, that provides the network connectivity with the different VLANs and subnets. Connected to it is our first firewall called LM-HQ-Firewall1 that will provide internet connectivity with three interfaces connected right now. One is the inside on gig one slash two, on the outside gig one slash one, and the management interface that's going to have an IP of 172.16.10.250. And by the way, this is an ASA 5506. On the outside, we have a simulated internet. It's almost like a transitory internet that connects to our main lab internet gateway. And that subnet right there is 192.168.10.24. All right, on the inside, we also have another VLAN, which is our server VLAN that we have on Windows 2012, which we're going to be using as our RDP jump box at the IP of .40 on the subnet 172.16.32.0.24. On the same VLAN, we have a second firewall that in the future lab, we're going to use as our server or data center firewall called LMHQ Firewall 2, which is also an ASA 5506. And currently, we only have the management interface connected, and its IP is .250. The reason why we have two firewalls in this lab, because I want to show you two different ways to initialize the firewall after we do the conversion. One is using the CLI, and the other one is using the web interface. There's a list of prerequisites that you might want to go through before you begin the conversion. First of all, you need to make sure that your hardware models supports FTD. And currently, the ASA 5500X, excluding 5585X, supports FTD, as well as the FTD purpose-built hardware model 4100 and the 9300 chassis also support FTD, obviously. As a side note, the first generation of the 5500X, which are 5512, 15, 25, and 45s, will require the service state drive as well. So make sure that if you have one of those models of firewalls and it was never purchased with SSD, make sure that you purchase one of those Firepower upgrade bundle that comes with the SSD. All right, next you need to have a TFTP server and the FTP server. In our case here, we're going to use our Windows 2012, which currently have the FTP server, as well as TFTP D32 install right now, which you will use as part of the conversion. Then you need to download an image from cisco.com. And let me show you what those images look like. 
opening up our Windows 2012 under our FTD directory. We have two files right here, very similar to if you dealt with the ASA Firepower, there is a boot image and there's also a software image. Yep, you can see right there, the file begins with FTD boot, right? So first we're gonna boot our device from this particular file and then later on install the software using a second file. So you can see comparatively, the software image is much larger than the boot image. And then you need to make sure that the management interface of the device connects to the network. Although this may vary based on the model, I think some of the models might use a different interface, but for our 5506, it would use our management interface. And currently we have it connected to our VLAN 10, which should be reachable once we have the IP configured. Then you need to check the minimum ASA and ASDM version. And according to the release notes, which I have pulled up right here, this is the release notes for Firepower 6.1. You can go through the section under supported platforms and environments. For our 5506, for example, our ASA requires version is 952 or later or 961 or later with the ROM on version 118. All right, and that's another important point for these platform listed here, ROM on version. And you can check the version of ROM on that your firewall is running. Let me bring up, this is our 5506 right here. Shover, you can see currently we're running 9623, which meets the minimum requirement. And then if you do show module, you can see the realm on the firmware version listed right here. And it looks like we already have our ASA realm on upgraded to 118. And for some reason, your ASA is running a lower version and it requires an upgrade. You can download a Raman image from cisco.com and the file name would look something like, I'm not sure if I have it here or not. Let me see. Yep, right there, ASA 5500 firmware 118. Right, and then you can use the command upgrade Raman and then you can just point it to the disk zero after you upload the file to disk. All right, so those are the prerequisites. Now, before you begin the conversion, it might also be a good idea to take a backup copy of not just your config, but your entire box, right? So things like certificates would get backed up as well if you have those custom certificate install. And if you're familiar with SDM, you can just use SDM to backup the entire firewall or from the command line, you can also use the command backup to pretty much do the same thing, right? And once you back that up, don't forget to move it off the box. So later on, if you decide to convert back to the ASA, you have something to go back with. And as important as the backup is the activation key. So if you have all sorts of ASA licenses installed, then you definitely also want to back up your activation key using the show activation key command, All right? Just basically copy this entire section out into a text file or something. All right, so once those are completed, we are now ready to perform the conversion to FTD. Right, the first thing that you need to do, since we are on console here, we can go ahead and reload the ASA. 